I was born in Biloxi, Mississippi in 1937. My father's name was George Udy Rossetti and my mother's name was Edna Mary Melvin. I was born uh, on the Point Cadet of Biloxi and I had lived uh, my whole life right here in Biloxi. My mother and father are both from Biloxi and my grandparents were from Yugoslavia. They came uh, around the turn of the century and settled on the point and at first went and was with the seafood industry, which most immigrant families were at that time. And then they had opened a po' boy restaurant uh, on the point, which became well known for its po' boys. Uh, it was uh, Rosetti's, Rosetti's po' boy. When I went into service uh, in the Army in 1954, uh, I had started uh, reading as much as I could at that time because uh, this mainly all you had on base at the time were libraries, so I went and checked out books. And I started developing a sense of what the rest of the world was about. Uh, and then one time I went to see a movie which was Lust for Life, and it had starred Kirk Douglas, who played the role of Vincent Van Gogh. And that movie struck a chord for some reason in me, and uh, the relationship between him and his brother Theo, uh, and just the whole picture itself, just, it changed my attitude about how I looked at things. And so that was my first inkling of wanting to look into the art, field of art. And um, so I went out on my next leave and I bought a little book, it, how to paint, a little paperback book. And I read that and then I went and got me a little beginner's paint set. And that's basically how it started right from there. And uh, I dabbled in drawing and stuff and then after I got out of service, uh, I came back and I had opened up my business in Gulfport at that time. So I, I never really got a real chance to delve more into art until after I had my business established and then I got married. And uh, I did my first painting in 1964. It was a Parisian scene almost, like uh, it was a scene uh, of this artist that was painting a nude and he had paintings all over the apartment. And I took and I went and had that frame. I, I told my wife, I said, I'd like to get this frame. So we went and got it framed and then the, this lady was just framing out of a house. It wasn't a commercial thing. And she told me, she says, you know, I had a customer come in and he'd like to buy that. Well, that really blew my mind then. So, but I didn't want to sell it. I wanted to keep it since it was my first one. I still have it today hanging in the wall on there. After that, it just developed from there. And I just, through the years, developed my own sense and style. I had saw where the artist shop up here. It was run by Mitt and Nellie Evans, who was doing framing. So I had did a uh, still life of a flower scene. And it had came out real nice. My, my wife had complimented me on how, how well it looks. So I wanted to get that framed and I took it up there. Well, lo and behold, he, unbeknownst to me, he put it in the display area before I came to pick it up. And he told me, a guy had come by, saw it, and wanted to buy it. <laughs> but I still didn't sell it, and I kept it. Um, but anyway, that continued my love and fascination for art. And of course, I was reading and looking uh, at different artists on my own, and um, it just developed from there on. Of course, I had people tell me, you know, well, you need to go ahead and take lessons, but 
I thought in my own mind that I didn't want to do that. I wanted whatever my art to reflect would be my own inner thoughts. It wasn't what somebody else's viewpoint was. So I wanted to have that fresh, original, kind of worldly look to my art, that it would be universal in application. So I didn't go for any type of training. It was all self-motivated, self-taught on, on all levels of my art. I uh, learned the fundamentals of my craft, which you learn the weaknesses and the strengths of all colors. Uh, you have you learn that it takes two to three days before you can come back to a segment of the all paint to let it dry before you can overlay other paints on top of it. But all these things came to you through uh, trial and error. It was not something that you could easily adapt from reading in a book. You pick up these things just through experience. At the same time that I was experimenting with my art, I was also still reading about some of the great masters and how they approached their thoughts on art. And so I fundamentally got a basic background of what the art world was. So after I developed and honed some of my techniques from realism, then I adapted to other forms like uh, expressionism, uh, elongated forms, transformational art like Picasso did. Uh, to implement that into the way I wanted to develop my own style. So I had to see how they did it so I could interpret it myself. And so some of my work reflects some of the ideas that they expounded. And I used it in my work to develop what I thought and how mine should look. At the same time, I had seen sculpture. And I never did read anything on, but just the basic fundamentals, but I wanted to approach it as really as a neophyte, never seeing how anything was done. But at uh, the uh, art shop, they, Nellie had told me, the owner had told me uh, about this model clay that would self-harden. So I bought my first package of that and I took it to work. I didn't know enough about it that I, I was going to have to have a platform to put it on and some armatures inside to hold it while I molded it. Well, my first piece was a frog. I don't know where the subject matter of that came up, but somehow that's what started to develop. I, I didn't use any modeling. I relied totally on my, my memory, and that's another characteristic of my painting. I, I very seldom refer to an actual model or, or something that would show me exactly how it's done. Uh, an animal or the subject matter, anything like that. I, I totally rely upon my own inner vision of how I have seen these things. There might be some anatomical things that might not be completely correct, but to me, it looks correct. The funny thing about art is, is one thing leads to the other. Uh, there is no set pattern to anything. An idea strikes you. You try different things with it, and you're always experimenting, whether it's, it's with the medium or uh, with the thought process. You always want something new and innovative. So. If you was going to define art, what would that denote? It would denote that you want to alter somebody's perspective about how they look at art. And if you can do that, I think you've achieved a certain amount of success. Material-wise, uh, medium-wise, anything like that, you're always looking for new avenues to express that. Uh, the future for my work, uh, if people accept it and like what they see and uh, I just like the idea to know that uh, I'm from the Gulf Coast. Bluxy is my home. I'd be considered a Bluxy artist but also a Gulf Coast artist and to be known in that uh, circles for that which would be a very pleasing thing to me. <laughs>